one. Welcome back in live to another episode of Rock Boys Football. I'm getting interrupted by an ad. That's crazy. We are back with the Cheez-It Bowl preview between the Clemson Tigers and the Iowa State Cyclones. One of the more intriguing bowl games that we've had. The Clemson Tigers obviously struggled early, but have been one of the better teams as of late. They're getting that run game going. Will Shipley's a guy who really excites me. Facing the Iowa State Cyclones, who uh, are facing a, a tough opt-out in Brees Hall. But other than that, there's not many opt-outs to note. And it, should, it sounds like these guys are all healthy for the most part and, and are ready to play. It's going to be it's going to be an exciting game. A team, Iowa State, that I was super excited for coming into the year that had a, a disappointing year, I think, Matt Campbell would say, and everybody in that locker room in 7-5. and five. But – they get rewarded with a really intriguing game in the Cheez-It Bowl. Uh, the spread's sitting at two-and-a-half point favorites uh, towards Clemson, one th- mi- minus 135 on the money line, and a low over-under as expected with two pretty solid defenses. Phil, what are your early thoughts on this game? So I think the big story – the big thing with Clemson is what they've been able to do down the stretch is really overwhelm people physically on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Offense, obviously, has been pathetic all year, and I I don't know that there's much you can do about it now. It is what it is, but... Tony Elliott's gone. Is he calling the plays? It doesn't matter. Oh, I know. There's no... I wouldn't... I'd be stunned. There's no way he'd call the plays for this game. Uh, But nonetheless, not that I think it matters. I just think you lack enough talent either way the only real star so far right now is Shipley and probably Joseph Nagata and everything else is really you're just not getting any production out of the the rest of that team so but having said that I think they are in a good position to match up well against an Iowa State team with no Brees Hall and and again I think Iowa State's not a, a wildly physically dominant offensive line and and I think with Clemson having pretty much their whole stable of defense besides Bale and Spectre in that front seven, uh, I, I think you're going to see a, an overwhelmed a little bit Iowa State team. Yeah, I, I'm kind of leaning that way too. I, th- I I like how the spread's tight because Clemson barely puts up, what are they putting up, 26 points per game, but that's kind of inflated with some weaker games like a UConn team. When they play better defenses, they struggle. We saw that, obviously, in the Georgia game. We saw that in the Pitt game a little bit. And Pitt's not even that great of a defense by statistical terms. Um, I think the story of the game is, is this run game. Will Shipley is a true freshman who I think a lot of Clemson fans, including myself, not a Clemson fan, but I was very excited for this kid. Uh, five-star running back, can kind of do it all, catch out of the backfield, very electric in space, goes down with an injury, comes back, and since he's come back, he's been absolutely phenomenal. You're looking at these stats from like the last couple of games. Clemson's really been working that run game. Will Shipley went for 128 yards. Kobe Pryor went for 78. This is against South Carolina. And Wake Forest, they ran all over the Demon Deacons as well. Kobe Pryor getting the lion's share of the touches there, 24 carries for 191 yards. Will Shipley, 19 carries for 112 yards. It seems like, yes, it's clear Clemson struggled protecting DJ and DJ struggled with inaccuracies. And the receivers have quite honestly struggled with drops from a receiving yeah. core that I was really excited about. Uh, that being said, they found their identity and that's establishing the run, using DJ in that run too a little bit. But they can run block up way better than, than they can pass block, get behind big Jordan McFadden, move some bodies for some really, really good athletic running backs. Uh, Will Shipley at kind of the guy I'm looking for. Iowa State, though, has has been really good against the run all year. Uh, it's kind of a surprising statistic because they really do line up in that 3-4 three, three, uh, front. It's almost like a 3-3-5 three, three, at yeah, this point. Yeah, A light box, but their linebackers can play Hummel and Mike Rose kind of fly around the field, both of them 80-plus uh, tackles on the year. That being said, I, I think this Clemson team is just going to be a little too physical for a Big 12 team that – one has struggled at times. Two, I think, la- lacks that physicality a little bit, and so I'm like, I- I'm kind of all over Clemson in this game. And Dabo Sweeney is going to s- find some bullshit reason to fire his team up. Like, is I'm not worried about Clemson not showing up to play ball. Uh, Dabo Sweeney, if anything else, if you have questions about him being a good head coach, which I think you'd be a fool to, he can motivate his players. His players always want to play for him, and and they're going to be fired up to play this game. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one glaring issue, I think, is what, what ha- you can do a little bit is attack uh, Iowa State on, on deep passes. Uh, because, again, you've mentioned they do play very – are fairly stout against the run. Uh, I think if you watch the Oklahoma State game, if Spencer Sanders is more steady and consistent and hits some some more of the – but there, there's guys open downfield here and there against – Iowa State, and the problem is Clemson just hasn't shown an ability to consistently do that. Uh, a lot of misses, really weak in protection, and and they do obviously have to deal with uh, that defensive lineman. I'm, I'm blanking on his name for Iowa State, but he can really play and get after guys. Uh, so that's the one thing I do want to say what I'm worried about for this game. If if there is a, a knock on this Clemson pick, it's – it's a really, really good pass rush from this Iowa State Cyclones team. Will McDonald kind of leading the way. He's I, I he broke the Iowa State sack record. I want to say he has another season of of I think double digit sacks. He's in the backfield a lot. Um, this team this team can fly around the field here, and so I'm a little bit nervous about the sacks. And those obviously can kill drives. We look at Will McDonald had a sack against TCU. Uh, the other kid, um, 58 Ayumi. Awazriki kind of plays um, – he's very disruptive in the run game too. And he also gets his fair share of sacks. I believe he had eight sacks on the year. So uh, this Iowa State team can get after the passer, and so I worry a little bit about that. I think what Clemson needs to do is really rely on that run, and then when you're going to pass, get it out of DJ's hands quick to your playmakers on the outside, which is not much to speak of. Uh, but they, they, they have some athletes there. And also work off that play action. Um, if you can establish the run, which I, I think Clemson, Clemson has shown they can establish the run, uh, especially lately. And if you, if you, I think early on, they were really trying to get DJ going, kind of like pressing that pass and kind of leaning, yeah. leaning back off the run. Lynn J Dixon, like he transferred out, but he didn't really play at all. So they had some young, young running backs there and they didn't really lean on them that much. You're starting to see them lean on these running backs. Um, and other than Clemson, is, is it's going to be enough. I think the run game is going to be enough. And I want to talk just about Clemson's defense, which is, I mean, a top five unit in the country still. And that's saying something when this offense goes three and out, like 50% of their plays, but the defense led by six year senior, James Golski is extremely, extremely talented. Andrew Booth at the cornerback spot, Miles Murphy, Xavier Thomas, KJ Henry uh, at the defensive line spot, the list goes on. I think they're going to overwhelm Iowa state up front. Who's definitely a little smaller up front. I don't think Iowa State's going to be able to run the ball, especially without Brees Hall. We don't really know. I, to be honest, I can even tell you who Iowa State's second leading, uh, rusher is. It might even be just Brock. Purdy. Yeah, they, they really did. Ball. They really rode Brees Which Hall. You have to. I, mean, I mean, Brees Hall's a special, special guy. Um, yeah. And I will say, I don't think Purdy can step in and take much. I don't think he's yeah, an Brock okay, Purdy's he's their an second okay runner, but he's not like, yeah, the, the next running back the next closest yeah, is, is, is just, so. is just not. So we haven't really seen that, which, which leads to other questions. Pass pro. Can these running backs pass pro? Are they able to set up these blocks? I'm, I'm not optimistic on that. Brock Purdy has been um, a little reckless with the ball lately. Not lately, just throughout the season. I mean, he's gotten yeah, he's always like been a reckless guy. With uh, kind of, especially specifically in that Iowa game, I think he ended up throwing three picks. Um, and so I just, I, I love the Clemson pick. I don't necessarily, I lean the under because I think it'll be a low scoring game, but I think. And I get that to low under, but God, I still think it's going to get under that because I don't see Clemson being able to light the scoreboard up either, frankly. Like they haven't done all year. I've watched Clemson a lot. And I just, I was very excited for them coming into the year. I think a lot of people had higher hopes than what DJ could have done. Uh, but also Justin Ross and that receiving core in general has kind of let them down. Uh, and then obviously pass protection has been a joke, but it, it makes, it takes a lot of pressure off those offensive linemen and pass pro. If you can stay uh, third and manageable, you don't have to sit there and pass pro for three, four seconds, get the ball yeah. out quick. I, mean, I think Clemson's the, it, it's the pick. You, this Clemson team's not going to worry worry about showing up um the one thing i do worry about is brent venables we got to talk about that him not calling the plays on the defense his in-game adjustments are always phenomenal clemson loves to get those plays in really late after they see what the offense does that's going to be a problem uh and there's a little bit of concern there but at the end of the day 
when you have four or five stars all over the field for Clemson's defense, mostly five stars at this point, I'm not too worried about it. I think Iowa State is just going to get a little overwhelmed. I think we're going to see some turnovers. I think Clemson Tigers are going to win this by over seven. Honestly, if you're looking at all lines, I think Clemson can win this over by, by over a touchdown. You yeah, I mean, that's, to that's, that's naturally aggressive just because I Clemson I do feel see. like Clemson's going to have, like, <laughs> yeah. if they get to 17 points, that'd be, like, a lot of points in my mind for them. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I think under Clemson, I think you can take them both. I think you'd be in good shape. Uh, Will Shipley coming out party, man. It's it, He's here. Uh, Will Shipley's good. I don't think – I mean, yeah, I think you're way higher on him than I am. I think he's solid, but I don't think he uh, – Look at these recent games, though. Uh, Pitt, yeah, that was just no. tough. They got behind early. But then Florida State, they fed him 25 carries for 128 yards. Uh, Louisville, 14 carries for 47. That's surprisingly low number. But then, I mean, three out of his last five games, he's going for over 100. He's also really, really good out of the backfield, I think. Um, oh, they didn't give it to him as much. I know his recruiting profile is that he's also very good yeah. out of the backfield. He has 11 catches on the year, which is not which is a little lower than I would have expected. But I think Clemson's the pick. I think you stay away from the over-under in the bowl games. Unless you're going over, I think you stay away from the the unders. I don't know. I mean, the what bowl games are like nine and three last I checked with the overs. Uh, even if I don't teams, care about these like, stupid trend stats, I know. But like, the teams at the end of the day, it's not about trend stats. It's about how these games are played. Teams go for more and fourth down. They go for more trick plays. All the all the plays, all the cats are coming out of the bag. I don't take overs in bowl games because people play recklessly. You don't take on. And half these coaches play. don't aren't even going to be here. Like, so we're going to preview the Oregon Oklahoma game next. Jim Moorhead's coaching that game and he's already got a job. Like there's no accountability. Bob Stoops is coaching for Oklahoma. They're nobody's coaching for a job. They're just like, it's like an a, like an AU football game out there. We're just going to go have fun. We're going to let it rip gunslinger mentality. And I'm not yeah. taking overs. I'm not taking overs. Um, that being said, these Why two coaches I mean, no doubt want to win this game at Campbell Devil Sweeney. So, so going to get the ball in the end zone. A la Auburn. So <laughs> fair. Um, that's a review on this you game. Your tricks. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, I love Clemson in this game. One of the few bowl games that I'm really, really confident on. Granted, the other two bowl games I was really confident on have not worked out very well. But hey, keep pre- you, you keep pressing forward. Just the bowl, bowl games are a crapshoot. It's a, it, like it, they're just fun. You, you got to bet on them. They're fun. Um, Clemson's going to want to finish this season with a. I think it'll be seven games that they ripped off if they win this one. So. Clemson, money line spread. Uh, we'll maybe don't take the spread if it gets over three, but two and a half. We're good with it. All right. As usual, appreciate you guys being there for us. Um, this one's going to be a fun one. We'll be tweeting for this one and talk to y'all later. Peace.